Hey guys, this week's episode is being brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to tools for marketing and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run a business as well. We ourselves have used Squarespace to build our own personal websites for ourselves, as well as the Reads website. It's incredibly easy. Plus, there are no hidden fees, no price hikes, and all the websites are optimized for use with mobile straight away. It's incredibly simple. You just start with a design template, drag and drop, clickety-click, and then you have a dope-ass website. So go to squarespace.com slash read for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code READ to save 10% off your first purchase. Go build something dope and fun your own little corner of the net. And let's move on. Hey, y'all. This week's episode is also brought to you by the ACLU. At Liberty, the weekly podcast from the ACLU explores the biggest civil rights and civil liberties issues of the day. As part of the ACLU Systemic Equality Program, many recent conversations focus on how we address America's legacy of racism and systemic discrimination. Recent episodes include conversations with Kimberly Crenshaw on the true meaning of critical race theory, Nicole Hannah-Jones on how slavery still manifests in every aspect of American life, and more. So subscribe to At Liberty on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else you get your favorite audio shows. All right, check it out and let's start the show. Come on, please. I want to be just like you. 600 Mercedes and 380s and my doll babies. (laughs) Crazy baguettes and my barrettes and H-class rocks inside my baby G-Shock. Fuck Barney and Lamb Chop. I don't love them hoes. But anything goes when it comes to bank rolls, diamonds on my toes, X's, and O's, Versace Hati in designer clothes. Scoop, Lil Neek, and Just, take their asses to Toys R Us, <laughs> make their asses spend their cheese, and kick them out to take the bus. Because I'm the what? The S-H-A-N-I-C to the E, but all my friends call me Miss Lil Queen B. Amazing. What, what? I like the green. Know what I mean? <laughs> Ever seen the professional? Mm. Uh, you have to say, uh huh. Yes. Uh, I mean, it was just, it's, it uh, reminded just me of some early. spoken words. Ever word seen the I... professional? You have to say, yes. To, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. <clears throat> well, I can clean. Okay. Welcome to the podcast, Ooh. everyone. Um, mm hmm. <laughs> I am Lil Shanice. And I am Kalia Copper, and this is The Read. Thank you for coming back. You really took me to a spoken word place that I um, <laughs> just brought up a lot of memories with You're parts welcome. of it. So thank yeah. you. No, I really appreciate it. No it was everything. Welcome back to the festivities here, uh, everyone. We've got things to unpack, so no time to waste. Uh, plus, whoa, a nap. Love a nap. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's start with Black Excellence. Black Excellence this week is going to someone whose name I enjoy saying, and that is Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace is uh, the first Black NASCAR Cup Series winner. Oh, yes. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Bubba Wallace about Bubba before. won his first NASCAR Cup Series at the Talladega Super Speedway mm. ever recently. He's the second black driver to win at the premier level, actually, because Wendell Scott won in 1963. Oh, go off. 
He's currently the only black driver in NASCAR. We've talked about him before because, of course, racist. I mean, he's not, it's NASCAR. <laughs> I love mm-hmm. Right. Hi, guys. Exactly. Um, but also because, you know, he was the racer who uh, came across a noose that was being uh, hung up in the garage that was assigned to his old team. The FBI investigated. Yes, and, of course, nobody got in trouble. But... Uh, I believe he was successful in getting a Confederate flag ban um, at NASCAR, which, I mean, I don't know how he's still walking the earth, to be honest with you. He's super blessed. God has him here for a reason. It's true. It's true. (sighs) Sir, you're about it. He won uh, at the recent NASCAR Cup Series. And apparently this was a controversial win because... There were delays uh, due to rain. Uh, Don't I know it? The event was postponed and was moved from a Sunday to a Monday. And then it was paused during like a bunch of times during the day. After 117 laps in the rain, they stopped and he was declared the winner for being the overall badass. But of course, plenty of people. (coughs) Right, um, right, right, right. are like fuck him we hate him he complains too much nigger and there were like <laughs> three, <laughs> there were three laps to go so he's not a real winner um, and to that we say choke stay mad um, catch up if your fave was going to beat him they would have they didn't and they likely well. wouldn't have with another three laps uh, get over it tis the season to go fuck yourself And um, here we are. Shout out to Bubba Wallace for winning, as well as um, apparently being signed to the first black majority owned NASCAR Cup team. But that's probably just because Michael Jordan owns it. And it's probably just Mm. him and like maybe one other nigga. Right. And but it doesn't it doesn't even matter because (laughs) it's not hard to be majority black anything when it comes to NASCAR. I don't think so. I really don't. Mm -mm. I don't know. So or most ownership of sports teams or it's leagues true. or whatever else yes. to be very honest or things but, or things yeah. <laughs> yeah just to be real about it but yeah. good for good for bubba amen bubba what a name <laughs> i mean his name's william but bubba. i mean yeah but everybody call yeah no i mean i love country shit i'll never not love it but nascar i've never been able to get into and the races aren't even the whole reason for that <laughs> it's just like y'all are driving I don't. The end. Wanna, yeah. I, I don't want to watch that. I don't mm. want to watch y'all drive real, real fast. <laughs> so, but good for him think anyway. Of Mario Kart, but it's not. It's like oh no, my, no, it's no way. Shells. It's nowhere near as fun as Mario Kart. No right? Bananas. You're not flying through the air. Ain't no blue shell. Can you imagine? Yeah. Now that sick, I man. would. Yes, if NASCAR was like Mario Kart, bitch, you could not get me to cut it off. <laughs> but, yeah, I'd watch that all the time. <laughs> Right. But since it's not, you know, I just congratulate the niggas and keep minding my business. Yeah. Yep. Because just Chuckery was like in first place and then Bubba hit him with a blue <laughs> shell and then a lightning yes, back to back. And so mm-hmm. now Bubba's the only one that's normal size and all the other racers are like the size of a, a snap. Mm-hmm. And then he blasts True. in and number and number one. And then the rest of the girls are fighting for uh, one of the little item boxes and a triple mushroom or possibly. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and don't let it be mm-hmm. one of the modern day ones where you can turn into a bullet bill and just careen through oh, yeah. the whole motherfucking That's shit. the best part. That is the, That's best, the best part. Item. That's mine. Yes. That's my favorite. When you are in dead last and you hit two of them little question blocks and you get a star and a bullet, nigga. It's over. <laughs> RIP to the rest of y'all. Yeah. Because you better hope. Were you having a nice day? Because <laughs> you won't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you better hope my shit run out, girl, because I am absolutely finna light y'all asses up, sending y'all to meet your fucking makers. Yeah. But, you know, NASCAR, nothing mm. like that. So, mm. yeah. but good for him anyway, also. Okay. This week in Hot Tops, um, you won all my love with contraception. Yes, true. You want to mm. fuck my mm. hoe. Mm. 
Right on the line. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt that you. I could fuck you forever. The wow. only trouble is you really are not that fine. You've got one night only. One night only before I get back on Jack. Okay, I love that. All right, wow. so I don't know. I'm tired. I deck that was off the dome. It was okay. amazing. <laughs> first things first. So I just okay. corralled together some topics throughout the week. Forgive me if you don't care about none of this shit. First things first. Okay. I was minding my business, and then apparently I uh, just had to come across a headline that says The Rock. Dwayne The Rock John- Johnson raps. He raps. He has a rap. What? He has a rap <laughs> with a rap. He rapped a rap. He rapped a rap what? song. And rap. Why? Why not? Uh, can he rap? Because I don't get that feeling. That's not the point. The oh. point is, <laughs> it happened. And, sure. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson appears mm-hmm. on rapper Tech 9s new single, Face Off. <laughs> uh, which also features Joey Cool <laughs> and King Iso. Iso. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that. It seems like. Mm. I don't know what I'm to say, but um, this I decided mm-hmm. to watch because of you're not going to tell me. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You're not going to tell me that The Rock is rapping, and I'm not going to watch it. So okay. I had to do it. I did. Now here's the thing: the song is pretty great. It's very aggressive. It's very like um. Fight Club, and the actual rappers did a phenomenal job to me. Okay, lyrically, okay. delivery wise, um, and then of course they have Dwayne, um, left for last. Okay, let's the positives. This man is a unit. Like we know that, but damn, is he a tank? Like he's just right. massive. He is, yeah. Um, now, this is going to sound shadier than it, I intended it to. Mm. Um, it felt like... It felt like The Rock was taking part in a maxi challenge on Drag Race. Oh, like, okay. it felt like... You know when <laughs> RuPaul has... <laughs> You know, like every other season or so when RuPaul has like, this week we're having a hippity hop rep challenge. And he does all that extra shit with his hands or whatever. And then the guest is like Eve and Trina or like Moni Love and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, Vita or whoever. And then, you know, like all of the girls have to like come up with a rap. It was very that. It felt like he was like in a, in a studio. With Todrick Hall. And by the studio, I mean, like, the runway, the main stage, oh, no. where they record their mm-hmm. music and also do the <laughs> Like, I don't know. Why do they have to do everything there? Anyways. <laughs> and so it just felt very World of Wonder. It felt kind of like... Wow. It wasn't awful. It wasn't awful. I mean... I just don't need it to You're not yet. selling it, right? You are not selling it. But they're not it. always bad. Sometimes they're fun on Drag Race. It's just like, yeah. oh, this isn't, you know, like you're having a good time because you enjoy, well, no. Yeah. Like you're having a good time because <laughs> someone told you to do this. <laughs> yeah. But I just I just Googled it real quick because I'm never going to listen to that. And apparently nobody did ask him to do it. No, he's just apparently like a big fan like, of Tech 9 <laughs> and right. was like, hey, Got some hot get fire. me, yeah, Dylon. Okay, no, I just there's nothing about this that sounds appealing to me. There's no reason to listen. I would press play. No, I go don't. Ahead, go ahead. Mm-mm. No, I don't. There are three talented rapping people on. Good there. for them. Oh, you know what? And the fact that the rock is at the end means that 
you can cut it off before you get to that yeah. part if you really want to. So yeah. maybe I'll do that so that them niggas get three quarters of a stream and sure. and you know point zero zero three cents and but also however that time. works out. Go ahead and I help him just watch no. the whole thing. I just don't think you don't want to watch the Tooth Fairy man. I can't. I cannot say that I do. You know he <laughs> he sang in that Moana movie, mm, and yeah. I actually do love Good that movie. Good, Good movie. movie. Yeah. No, it's a fun song. I loved his character in that, which was basically just like him, Rock, but yeah. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> but with like magical powers. But it was mm-hmm. like basically him. Um, and, and I felt like that fit, you know, like the singing was a bit of a stretch cause it's not like he's a vocalist, but it no. worked. Well, that's Disney. It was a simple enough song, right? It's Disney. And so, you know, the Disney magic and all that, they made it work and it was, it was decent. I liked the song, yeah. but I feel like you asking me to listen to this man rap is a, is a step too far and I just won't be doing that. Yeah. Disney's always got like, you know, vocal losts like Mm -hmm. singers right and then they have someone who's just like oh you know that's fine you know again somebody famous and the appeal is that they're famous and they give you like a little coach or Mm -hmm. whatever so you're not just miserable (laughs) you know so you can stay on a basic melody you can just get the 101 just from note to note girl we're not asking you to do no runs or nothing please just this is not Christina Aguilera doing, you know, don't even <laughs> my reflection. Don't get not adventurous. Ab- don't put your own flair. We're not asking for that. Right. Yeah. So and I felt like that was enough of a stretch and it was good and fun and good enough and all that. This I won't I will not do that. So that's not nice. Mm-mm, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nothing about the rock that says I'm a good rapper and you should listen to me rap. I don't get that vibe at all. What is this half day at white lady from um, Shark Tank name? Barbara Cochran? Is it Corcoran? Oh, I actually don't know how you pronounce her last name. Corcoran? Co- okay. I haven't watched Shark Tank in Corcoran. so long, but I did see this clip. I did Car- see this. Car- I'm just saying, I'm going to say Cochran. Miserable bitch. So Barbara Cochran was on. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Corcoran. <laughs> Co- okay, whatever. Barbara Cochran. <laughs> Was on um, The View. And Shark Tank, I guess, was the tea and shit. And so they were talking about... um, What is the company called? Uh, The Good American Jeans clothing line. Oh, (laughs) Christ. Not the Khloe Kardashian jeans. Is that what they are? Yes, those are Khloe Kardashian's jeans. So where are they made to fit? Wasps? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I think the whole thing is they're like inclusive sizing, like maybe it goes to a 24 or something, which is not inclusive. But I think the point is that Chloe was like, oh, my God, you guys, I used to be slightly chubby, too. So I'm going to make jeans for big people as well. Oh, no. Shut me up. What? I go to a 32. Apparently, Chloe Kardashian's jeans go up to a size 32. Child. Let me tell you something. None of my business. They could be great jeans if y'all having Not your time either. good. Mm-mm. You, know, you can get know. great jeans at a lot of different places. Though. Very true. I don't have to shop Kardashian for jeans. So, <laughs> well, they were talking about the things, and at <laughs> at some point, the talk of COVID butt, quote unquote, came up, <laughs> and you know, people uh, gaining weight. And Whoopi Goldberg talked, you know, joked about whether or not the jeans would be able to fit her, you know, weight gain or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And Miss Barbara joked, when you get finished with those jeans and decide you don't like them, give them to me. I'm going to make two pairs. Clearly, she thought this was funny. (laughs) Literally not a living person on set did. (laughs) (laughs) Because, like... Mark Cuban was like, (laughs) uh... Like... Nobody else had a good time with that. It was very right. awkward. Um, Whoopi just <laughs> looked like Celie No Shade. <laughs> looked side to side like, I didn't even do anything to this bitch. Like, this bitch came at me unprovoking folk. Anna Navarro um, came in like a bestie and said, well, let me tell you Did. something, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Did. <laughs> came in like a stand (laughs) she really came in like a hardcore stand and said well actually jill biden and who else 
I don't know. I can't remember I the other remember. person she said, but she's named like two high profile white women and said they both wore that dress on TV already. Uh, and everybody cheered. It was a very weak. <laughs> <it> was, <laughs> I mean, I personally, I thought that was ridiculous, but the white Barbara was like, oh, no, they haven't. So I yeah. guess it worked. I because guess yeah. she was offended. She was like, <laughs> no, they have not. It was I, strange. Yeah. It was, it was, it was strange, but I loved it because Anna piping up like that, first of all, it really gave like very strong stand energy. It did. And secondly, she, it was like, she said it so quickly that you knew she had been thinking that since she saw that bitch in that dress and all she needed was a reason <laughs> to say it out loud. But she had been, you could tell because she did not even think about it. She was like, oh, Whoopi, I got it. I got it. I got it. No, because other bitches done wore this dress already. The bitch is late. And lazy. <laughs> but you know something else? Whoopi definitely gives me like, I will li- give you advice about your husband while I smoke a cigarette on the lot between takes mm-hmm. or whatever. Like mm-hmm. Whoopi gives me like, I'm probably like, I'll invite you over for soup and we can, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it is just soup talk season. about the ways that, you know, you've been mansplained to or whatever. She seems like, you know, like if you're friends with her, she's probably like a good healing maybe friend that cusses <laughs> smokes it smokes with mm-hmm. cigarettes <laughs> yep <laughs> smokes with cigarettes <laughs> and also like i don't know makes a mac something just wholesome <laughs> so like that is why to me i wasn't really taken aback too much about anna popping up and being like what you're not gonna do is try my bitch at all i'm gonna oh no not about. at all i just thought it was hilarious because also, the swiftness and then again, it was like, you've been holding that in. Yeah, it really was like, <laughs> and- the like you said, the <laughs> moment that her eyes said, like, she was like, oh, I want oh, her no. to <laughs> say something to you today. Like anything, anything. Yeah, she was just going to leave it to the group chat, but no. Bro, yes. Say something yes. slick on set. And yeah. so Anna was like, she probably had texted it. yourself. She probably, she probably had, had texted already, it before yeah. she even said that. <laughs> yeah. Before she even said that. In the same dress Jill Biden was wearing on When they cut to commercial, Whoopi texted the group chat back again and was like, bitch, now you did not (laughs) have to say that. No, she did. I'm glad she did, too, because that was was just so rude. And you could have just been like, give them to me or donate them or they're really great jeans and not said anything about. Yeah, or nothing. (laughs) Like, you could have just been like, no, we really love them. The Kardashian didn't pay me at all to say that. You could (laughs) have... Taking that so many different ways, and yet you decided to just be weird and rude about Whoopi's body for no reason. So you got what you had coming. Corcoran said that um, on social media, I made a joke at Whoopi's expense, which I now realized wasn't funny. No, you realized then. Yeah, you <laughs> because, knew it. You knew it yeah. as soon as you said it. Anna made sure you knew when it was said, <laughs> doll baby. <laughs> For anyone who I may have offended unintentionally, I just wanted to say I really am very sorry. Um, Whoopi received the uh, apology and tweeted something to the effect of, Barbara, you and I have been friends for years and years. I knew you were joking or I knew you were kidding, something like that. Um, and she really didn't look like blown over by it. She just looked like, did this bitch just really say that shit to me on TV? Right. So it like, like, what do you want her to say? Right. Like, <laughs> what was what, she supposed to say to that? Right. I, it was, just, it just wasn't funny. It was so like tasteless and just right. more than anything, like awkward. It was like, even if she was your friend and knew you were kidding, there was no saving it. Right. And I just don't know why you as a, thin person think that joking about a bigger person's body is your place why do you even think that's your place like if this is really your friend then why would you do it i think people are so sensitive to it because so many people have gained weight over the pandemic and being at home i wouldn't like we would we don't make jokes like that with each other like right i just don't joke with people about their body you joke with me for being absolutely ridiculous <laughs> late for everything gay yes, as hell it's true. Um, i i joke with you for being <laughs> i don't know a, a hardcore lesbian i was gonna say the and, biggest lesbian <laughs> and every now and then heartless in the yes. way that is mostly destructive to the cis het normative <laughs> And this is, you know, and this is who we are. And this we stand these things about one another, right. which is why it's say, fun 
when we make fun of it. It works, right? Like, there's a... I just don't know why. I don't think y'all are actually friends, Barbara and Whoopi. I think, <laughs> I think y'all, y'all are just know like industry other. friends. Right. right, exactly. Industry friends. Yes. Industry you have clinked a couple of she glasses at, at a gala yes. or two or whatever. And right. kiki, ha, ha, ha. I don't know. That, have you been to Whoopi's house? May, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, Because why I would you say doubt. that? Right. It just seems... It was just a weird comment to me. And then her apology was even worse because it was like, I apologize to anybody I may have offended. Like, girl, you were talking about Whoopi. You weren't talking about <laughs> the rest of us. So what do you mean? Anybody you may have? a you? Why isn't the apology directed to the person who you made the comment about? Fucking weirdo. <laughs> God, just weird. Mind your skinny ass business. <laughs> like, who's, it was just dumb. It was so it was. dumb. It was, it was so was. dumb. I mean, but they lit her ass up, so. They really did. Like You really thought the EGOT, the black EGOT didn't have no fucking stands? Did you? Oh, you didn't think this through at all. Of everybody on that stage, you could have came for. She literally didn't have to say anything. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg she did, yep. said nothing. Could have just said, oh, no, Whoopi, they're great jeans. They go up to size 32. Try them. You'll love them. Period. Would have been just fine. You weren't a shark in that tank. I mean. So I've learned um, <sighs> who Jesse Nelson is by way of Onika Mirage. Mm. Um, have you heard of this white woman? I had not until her cultural appropriation bop came out. And mm. then <laughs> and then I had to Google it, which was awful. <laughs> I didn't realize she was part of Little Mix, which I have heard of. Um, but I don't know anybody in it or any of their songs. So it was just a, it was a bad moment for me all around. (laughs) Puffy letting her use that sample to make that terrible song. And then actually being in the video to her, (sighs) everything, every single thing about her look from the extra bronzer that we told y'all not two weeks ago to leave at the fucking Sephora and not pull out for fucking Halloween she said, fuck all that. Went and got all the light skin girl makeup. These bundles she had in her head. The bad boys, which was just like niggas and white boys and overalls with one strap off. Like, are, y- are y'all doing that in the UK? Are y'all still doing that one strap overall thing? Is that the fashion there? Is that the style? Is that what the youth are doing? Maybe I don't think we're doing that. I don't think we're doing that anymore over here. I think we left that in the 90s, maybe. But. The youth are bringing back everything that was going on in the 90s. So perhaps I just I watched that video and I was pretty upset because it's time I'll never get back. Bathing apes on this. I don't I don't know. I just remember not liking the song, the choreography, her look, any of it. So. So, yeah, um, we're not I'm assuming that Nikki got her first dose. We don't really know. Um. (laughs) But let me tell you something. Mama is hard at work to divert the conversation. And, well, here we are with a um, a feature for Miss Jessie Nelson, who, as Crystal mentioned, was one quarter of the mix, the littlest mix. Oh, it's four of them. Yeah, I believe there were okay. four. I saw a video with three of them, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that may be them now. Uh, okay. And, well, I thought uh, they all got pregnant, though. Maybe. Like you, I really didn't know much about Little Nick. Little Nick. I knew one song, and I feel like that song also had Nicki Minaj on it. Let me Google. Okay, so yeah, they are... It's the three of them now. The Jesse girl is not part of the group. She left last year. Um, yeah, I'm familiar with them because they were a huge, are a huge, whatever, you know, big girl group. And um, that's about it. I couldn't tell you the names of any of them prior to today, um, where they came from, how they're doing, anything but the fact that they're a big group, a big deal. They seem to be like, um, you know, Danny um, U. Kane. They got. St- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very clever. Oh my 
Uh, it looks like it looks like they got started on X Factor. Yeah, apparently that is the the T. So when I was like, when I went to go and watch this again, mostly to be like, oh, Nikki's doing things because you know she was at the house, and so I watched it. And when I was watching it, I was like, you know, I think it took maybe 35 to 40 seconds before I said, am I looking at a white woman? And then um, I Googled her. And in fact, I was looking at a white woman. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Ms. Nelson. Because um, I went ahead and just Googled uh, uh, Jesse Nelson blackfishing. And man, the results were plentiful and f- and far before this was a thing. Right. Apparently and, she'd been doing this. But here in a, uh, an article published by People that is t- headlined, Little Mix members unfollow ex-bandmate Jesse Nelson amid boys blackfishing backlash. <laughs> It says here that Jesse, um, white woman and Nicki Minaj collaborator, says that. Um, <laughs> Does it say white woman? No, I said that. Oh, <laughs> damn. She says that she's just being 100% herself. She says, quote, if you look at me on X Factor with my big curly hair, I was wearing trainers and combats. That's who I am as an artist and as Jesse. I was going to do this in a British accent, but I figured they didn't do anything to deserve they, this. They, right. You know what I mean? This that, is probably bad enough. The fact that yeah, we don't know exactly. nothing about these stars. <laughs> right. Um, and so maybe you shouldn't have mentioned this uh, part, Jesse, because then I Googled you from... Uh, your X Factor days and, you know, to look up this alleged big curly hair that you're referencing. Yeah, And honestly, she just kind of looked like a ginger gold apple. It wasn't really like <laughs> she looked anything like today. In fact, you looked far, far more like your white self when you were on X Factor than you do now. Um, you yeah. had no lips. Your hair, well, curly as it may have been, was... Caucasian and Mm. (laughs) now I guess you're Don Richard I don't understand what and then so then can we also like let's you know get back to the song itself which is wretched it sucks Mm -hmm. Um, the sample is unnecessary the fact that you just remade the video from 2001 everything about it the choreography the looks your voice um (laughs) hated it honestly Terrible. the best part about it was the was like the beginning of the nikki verse and probably just because her accent is very new york and it's a new york ass song and then i was like oh yeah no this still sucks so <coughs> there's that in a review nikki is also <laughs> apparently so going to be re- uh appearing on the real housewives of potomac reunion special um, she posted on her Instagram in a new, um, like a honey barbecue wig. She posted herself on set alongside Bruiser and she's got the, the, uh, cards in her hands <sighs> and it looks like she's got questions to ask just as she promised. Um, oh no. Andy says, it's the reunion I could never get away with. At the end of ours tonight, Nicki Minaj surprised the hashtag RHOP and did her own thing. Hashtag Andy Conda. Oh, Christ. That is also awful. <laughs> um, and so oh, this Lord. gives me like you can just go ahead and pull up to the very end of that if 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 you know the head Barbie in charge is what you're looking for. Because rather than fucking off and just letting Nikki host the whole thing, which is what I guess we, you know, were expecting, he's still going to do it because of course. Mm-hmm. And then they're probably going to have Nikki hop on for like the last half of part three of the goddamn reunion or whatever. And then, you know, that's where you'll get your memes. I mean, because was Nikki really going to sit there all damn day and record a Not three part Bear reunion has special? To say about it. <laughs> right. So I so that makes sense. But that young man be tearing her shit up. <laughs> and good for him. Yes, indeed. I agree. Do it again. More. As he should. Tear up the router I- next. 
I thought you were gonna bring up this Instagram live she did. <laughs> what, what? What? Oh, you didn't see it? No. A couple hours ago, she went live with this Jesse girl because they were talking about the backlash. People talking oh, about this about girl's this. blackface. I didn't even watch. I didn't watch it because I. <laughs> You're an adult with responsibility. Please, right? That doesn't even make sense. But no. I've seen a, a couple of clips of it, and in one, Nikki is talking about how black girls can't be mad at a white girl doing all this because we wear blonde hair and she did it. wig. She, she did. did. She brought she did up. It. She did. No, she she brought out that You're tired lying. bullshit. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, and she mentioned lying. how. She mentioned how she wears blonde hair and contacts. So Duh. it's okay for, which you should stop. You should stop. I'm so glad you brought up the <laughs> contacts because you should fucking stop. <laughs> Those eyes look demonic. Stop that. Please. Please, my God, please. It's very swap meat. The conjuring. But yeah, it was I the clip I saw was what? her being like, y'all are just hating. It's really giving jealous girls. Y'all are just oh, like, you're a beautiful and you can do your thing and whatever you want to do is fine. Bad bitches unite okay. or whatever. It was like very much. It was that. And I was. If you save up, um, like I know the economy is in the shitter, been in the sh- like everything's awful. Mm-hmm, but yep. like lip fillers, breast implant hip and thigh and weave Mm -hmm. and eye it's not that like unattainable jealous of what exact and apparently she was talking about natural black 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 girls being actually black the thing that the doll is paying people to make her yes jealous of what I think the the black girl in Little Mix, uh, forgive me. I, I think there's two black girls in Little Mix, but I could be. Oh, like, I know well, the one that one. I clocked is black. <laughs> you probably thinking of Jesse. <laughs> no, I'm, I know that there's one that's actually black. Well, there's there's one that my eyes says is Negro. And I think that one released like screenshots or something where she had told this Jesse girl, this browning shit that you're doing with your skin and this nigger accent and all that you need to stop that bullshit and so i think nikki was addressing this black girl talking about her fans or her stands or her haters or whatever else and how this everybody is just jealous of jesse and i'm like why would an actual nigga be jealous of somebody who's trying to look like one i don't have to go to sephora Ulta to get this skin tone i just have to wake up (laughs) Like, I don't, it's, it's really not making sense, but, uh, you know, what the one thing Nikki won't talk about is all the legal trouble that she and her husband are in. And every time she gets to her shenanigans, I just think about how she wants us to, you know, ignore the elephant in the room, pretend the man is not behind the curtain type shit. I, what else can you even say to a black woman who's still saying well if we wear straight hair then they can wear uh, miss tina's wigs no <laughs> no no you cannot you put on <laughs> like she's darkening her skin that is not her skin tone nikki that's not her skin color also black people have don't Please, please, because it's just how many times do we have to say it? I know. And it's just like it. Li- I'm going to lose my mind. I can't keep saying the same shit. Yeah, I can't do it. Huh. So I just leave Nicki Minaj exactly where she's at. Oh. Girl. I'll talk to you again when your husband goes to prison <laughs> or when you take them contacts out, whichever come first or or both. Preferably, preferably both. Let's start with the contact since we don't have to wait on that. <laughs> Can you please just take them out? You look so scary. <laughs> it's like people who wear the eyes don't realize how fucking terrifying they look. <laughs> They're like blackout curtains for your soul. I look at you and I see just nothingness. It's like, is this even a human being I'm looking at? Is this a robot? Is this something that has no feeling behind it? I know, I'm sorry. They perturbed me. Y'all know this about me. <sighs> Remember that NYPD officer who had color contacts? I do. 
Yeah, they sent a bitch in color context to talk to me. Oh my god! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Distress. Stop it. Um, eighteen NBA players are currently facing uh, <laughs> serious legal trouble after uh, apparently scamming uh, the association or attempting to. By way of defrauding uh, their health care plans. That's right. 18 players, including Monica Brown's ex-husband, Shannon, oh, yes. are accused of submitting claims for reimbursement on their medical and dental procedures, um, except for the fact that these procedures were allegedly never performed. And all of this... Uh, seems to net nearly four million dollars in its scammery. Uh so eighteen players. That is just crazy. With mug shots. Um what's going on, guys? I don't know because four million dollars divided amongst eighteen people is a little over two hundred and twenty thousand each. And that just does not seem like it could possibly be worth it. You mean to tell me all these former NBA players are that desperate for a couple hundred thousand dollars? Why? What happened? Now, this is Shannon today. He looked down. Well, I mean, and that's another thing. I scanned the list and only a couple of names even jumped out to me as recognizable. Most of these niggas I've never heard of. So I'm at the maybe they weren't life. in the league. <laughs> maybe they weren't in the league for very long and they never got the chance oh, to make that much like, money. Nigga, bitch, I maybe they energy. blew it all. But, like, you're on federal charges now for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Like, uh, it just does not. Okay. I hope it was worth it to you, but it don't seem like it could have possibly been. Especially when you read the details and this stuff, like, these niggas submitted claims for procedures that they claim to have done on some day. And then you look at their Instagram and they jet set into fucking Spain or some shit on that same day. And it's like, <laughs> y'all didn't even try. You didn't even try yes it's like the people with the fake vaccine cards and they just write down some random group of numbers or they misspell the name of the company that made the vax and it's like oh you niggas (laughs) you need to go back to the fucking drawing board because you put zero effort into this everyone subscribe to where in the world is pp loan diego yes (laughs) you niggas with these ppp loans (laughs) thinking that the feds wasn't gonna come for you (laughs) <laughs> but at least the the ppp niggas the ones that i've seen getting in trouble they were like they took like 1.6 million or something where it's like i could see why a regular person would be enticed by that kind of money true but former nba players and a couple hundred thousand is not clicking for me especially when these same niggas be posting videos on private jets and eating a bunch of seafood and throwing money at hoes and all this other it's shit. giving Just loan like, sharks it, it it's not making a lot of sense to you, girl. But mm, you know the thoughts and prayers. Um, speaking of th- thoughts and prayers, sending some out for one uh, Ray J, who has apparently been hospitalized with pneumonia. Uh, really? When he was initially admitted, doctors thought that he had COVID, so they placed him in the COVID wing, and uh, he got five tests all of which came back negative. So they transferred him out of COVID because apparently he just got the regular pneumonias. Um, Wow. He said that he thought that he was going to die um, and he's been praying. Uh, Apparently he's a bit better, but still receiving oxygen and having difficulty breathing as of, oh, this was a few days ago. So maybe he's better now. Um, but also, scandalously alongside this story, he apparently filed for divorce for the third time while in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so like, he said, don't let my deathbed keep me from what's important. <laughs> like, what the fuck is... Go- Just let this be it. It seems like Please. it's done. It seems like it's done. Mm-hmm. And maybe you guys should just go ahead and and look to the future separately of one another. Cause my it should have been done. It should have been done when she threw that drink in his face and he pushed her in that little pool. <laughs> it should have been done from right then on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. 
They should have never even gotten married. This should have never gone as far as it did. When Princess Love was pregnant and crying on Instagram, talking about how Ray J was in New Year's for like three weeks or New Year's in Vegas for like three weeks over New Year's or something and <laughs> wouldn't Brandy come home or, or call the baby. Her. <laughs> yes. Like y'all should have been, this should have been ended. So, you know, maybe he got a little sniff of death and was like, let me handle my affairs right goddamn now. Because if I die today, she getting half of my scooty bike money. <laughs> oh, no. Well, maybe half. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure some is going to his mama, his sister, his baby, of course. But she got his baby, so you know, she getting all that scooty bike money. She getting all the, the flip glasses. I forgot all. about the scooty bikes. <laughs> she getting all that. So Ray J said, "Let me just go ahead and line my things up because I never know when the Lord is gonna call me home." <laughs> Get better, sir. Oh, yeah. Right. Good. Good luck in your recovery. That's so crazy. Woo. Also sending out some positive vibes for Doja Cat, who tweeted. Um, I'm sorry, it's not funny. I don't even know what happened, but <laughs> you know, I'm laughing because do you watch? You don't watch Potomac, but there's a girl named Ashley on um, Real Housewives of Potomac, and <laughs> Ashley, some of the people Darby? I follow, call, yes, yeah, some of the people I follow call her Doja Darby. <laughs> you know what? I'm so fucking tired of y'all. Or Ashley Cat. <laughs> Oh, I am so sorry. As soon as you said Doja Cat, I thought of Doja Darby. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> what's happening with... Do- God damn it, I almost said it again. What's going on with Doja Cat? God damn it. That girl is so talented. I have to give it to her. She. Is, I did not think Bitch I'm a Cow was going to lead us to this. It's the fact that Ashley Cat sounds like Alley Cat. Mm-hmm. And kind of like Ashley Cat. <laughs> Are you going to be okay? <laughs> Call me off guard. Okay. okay. So, <clears throat> Doja Cat tweeted uh, just yesterday, I'm just tired and I don't know what, I don't want to do anything. I'm not happy. I'm done saying wow. yes to motherfuckers because I can't even have a week to just chill. Never not working. Fucking tired. Alex is getting old. He's 68 years old and I can't even be there for him. I want to be alone. It's not anybody else's fault but mine anyway. I just keep agreeing to shit I don't want to do in the future. It's my own dumbass fault. And then I'm too tired to put any effort into this shit because I'm so run down from everything else. I just don't care anymore, man. And someone said, just don't do your next concert, which she said, I have to, which I'm sure she certainly does because contracts mm-hmm. and shit. And yep. so... I read that and I said, seen, understood. Absolutely. I get the vibes, Miss Girl. Mm -hmm. And so sending out some positivity to you. Hopefully you get some time to rest. You fucking talented weirdo, you. She's probably booked up for the rest of the year. And she thought about it and was like, holy Christ. Like, I'm not going to get to sit down until January. But, you know, we be like, say, like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, come on. Man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fine, sure. Like, like mm. you, I think, have done a better job at, at this than it's I true. have, especially recently being yep. like, I was just I'm about to say that. not doing it. I like, am not doing I'm it. I'm not doing <laughs> it. It's no shade. I love everybody. It has mm-hmm. nothing to do with anything but the fact that I I have to prioritize myself and what I'm prioritizing. I can't like, yes. no, the answer is no. And like, I'm <laughs> playing catch up with that. You're working sentiment. on it. You're working on it. Um, But yeah, I totally get it. I understand that level of exhaustion. No, I read this. I was like, oh, woo, woo, woo. Because she is incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. You know, despite whatever anybody might say. And she's, like, a huge pop star right now. So I'm sure she's crazy busy. And, like, I don't even really know what it's like to be a huge pop star with millions of followers. And how old is Doja Cat? 25. I just Googled it. To be, it. like, that young and that age yeah. in this day and age. Like, girl, fuck all of this. And have all that going on. 
because yeah. the girls had breakdowns back before, mm-hmm. you know, the Twitters and all that. Instagram, other shit. right. So it's a little different now. Yeah. So. Take your time, period. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody give a fuck about it. Like, who, like, literally, even one thing I will say, I I have started to get more comfortable being like, I'm going to do the best I can to make these episodes happen and happen on time. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, for whatever reason, I'm not going to be a pillar of anxiety until it's done. You know what I mean? Like the girls will simply live. Mm -hmm. They will. And the end, you know what I mean? Because before, (laughs) you know, I would be Mm -hmm. like flipping over table, chewing glass, like, (laughs) yeah work. anxiety on a hundred thousand definitely and now i'm just like girl y'all ain't gonna kill me not doing this so you know like if you need the read to come out by 9 a.m on a tuesday or else your life is over then guess what it's just a matter of time before you expire because it's human <laughs> beings behind this here <laughs> it's human beings and that so. is ever so sweet and thank you so much but also are you okay because no, um, you're definitely not. You're definitely not. But also, like, people exaggerate. And truly, they will be okay. What's going on over here? So, I, mean, I just, yeah, my heart goes out to this girl. Because, please, be talking, pretty much all of 2020, I was like, girl, if it's not the read, literally don't don't email me. Because whatever you want to do, I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's just a no. Okay. And it's literally no shade to nobody. But even now, I'm like, is it insecure? Is it the read? Then I'm not. What is this email for? Like, I don't, I haven't I'm, <laughs> I don't know what y'all are talking about. I'm not doing it. Like I have school and I'm trying to like keep myself alive and take care of myself and, and beat depression. And so I just don't have it for nothing. This else. person was born in 1995 and is a huge Bless pop it. Star. Bless it. <laughs> mm-hmm. A baby. Well, God bless us, everyone. I think I'm going to wrap it there. Okay. And um, uh, we're just going ahead and uh, call that the hot tops for this week. Just go ahead. But before we move on, it's time for (laughs) Kid Fury. So, uh, welcome back to another episode of Kid Fury's Sports Shirt. Cannot wait. So, this week, we're going to do something different. (laughs) I was going to talk about the basketball sports. Mm. But this game that I really wanted to talk about is still taking place. Actually, it's almost over. You want to wait 44 seconds? Uh... Is the score that close? No, the Sixers are going to win this. Um, oh, yeah, the Sixers won that. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, wait, no, this game's over. <laughs> it's finished. So I had to refresh. Um, well, <laughs> okay. there's that. But what we are going to talk about this week is boxing. Oh, this past weekend was another chapter in the Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury boxing extravaganza, mm. Lord of the Rings trilogy, Fellowship of the Ring. Um, and this was a fight in where um, Afro-American Deontay Wilder um, took on um, uh, British person Tyson Fury yet again. Um, I believe this went to 11 rounds. While that Tyson Fury's come a very long way since cornering and attacking Hermione Granger during her first year ever at Hogwarts. And now here we are, um, you know, winning titles and things of that nature. It was a riveting fight, to say the least. One for the history books, fighting fans are saying. A great close to a trilogy. Deontay came out 
guns blazing to mm-hmm. what ESPN called a fleshy body uh, of of Tyson Furies, which was like, you didn't have to do that, man, like that. Like, it's like, I mean, have you, do you know what this man looks like? Tyson Fury? Yeah. Yes, because I just saw a video of him saying nigga. But otherwise, I would not have known. Yep. He's like rapping along to some song. It was like, and you know, and you, what was it? If you don't know, now you know, nigga. It was that. Nothing he just about verbalized that it. is <laughs> shocking. Okay. Or surprising to me. Um, Tyson Fury was much like, you know, a boss in Dark Souls or Bloodborne or one of the many other uh, haggard and dark uh, games from from software. Uh, he just refused to die. There were many stages to the fight. His health bar just refused to go down, even when Deontay was able to put him on his ass twice in the fourth round. He just got back up. The power of racism bringing him through. <laughs> and um, oh, the white man won. Oh, boo. Yeah, boo. He won again, unfortunately. Mm, Um, Don't they always? Don't they always? There's nothing that can hold them back. Um, And so here we are in the today of things. uh, Tyson Fury doing uh, another justice for ogres everywhere. And um, I suppose this is meant to be the end of that. Uh, If you watched the fight, God bless you. Um, I didn't clearly because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But what I did do is go to the post fight strip club event, and that was a good. Okay. Yeah, oh wow! Good. So that's what this is about. <laughs> yeah, it was great for everyone. Um, you know, great to see some tits, some wings. I had a BBL oh, yeah. on my belt and some Casamigos, and great vibes okay. and ratchetry. You get to see, you know, the latest um, or the the next upcoming drill rapper <laughs> that will have a hit single and then go to prison. Uh, mm-hmm. So that That's was also fun. Uh, fun look into the gaze into the future, and um, <laughs> yeah. Mm, I don't know anything about boxing, so unfortunately, I'm unable to. I love it. It's great. (laughs) Well, no, I know you do, but that's just because you love violence. I really enjoy it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So so that's why you're into it. Meanwhile, I was watching the WNBA, which does not get. Yeah, because you're getting. So bloody or. I mean, so good. Speaking of which. Excellent. Thank you so much for bringing that up. So, um,. Well, let's discuss shape. Don't pudding. ask me about my nope. Don't ask me about my tweets. Nope. It's so really shorts um, is over. Shailani <laughs> nope. Petty, Petty nope. of the Phoenix Mercury is <laughs> a That's uh, women's national basketball association player, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and also a stone cold smoke show. <laughs> and so um, you have been lusting. Thirsting I and thriving underneath briefly. the um, <laughs> the shine I can't help it. that emanates I off of Petty's being as a guard, a guard oh. for the for the Mercury, the Phoenix. Mm-hmm. The Mercury. Good for you. Doing great, yeah. well, doing very well in the season. By the way, mm-hmm. um. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Five whole wins of the season in the season in the in the what? five five result five W's <laughs> and like so many things. What? Yeah, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five W's. Five wins in the season. Five wins so far since September. So, okay. So, are you talking about the playoffs specifically? And what do you? Yes. Okay. So, anyway, what, where where are we going with this? We're going where? with the fact that you have been watching ever closely as an analyst yourself. Oh no, I wouldn't say that. And um, may have gained the attention of our star uh, basketball player here. So, what was it like mm. having such a close, intimate conversation with uh, Shay? 
And what happened in the DMs? The fans want to know. Um. <laughs> Your mic's hot. Uh, yeah, it is. And uh, first of all, nothing happened in the DMs. This was just a tweet that happened. And I was deeply embarrassed that she saw it. I still do not know how she saw it because it's not like I typed out her name or anything. So I don't know what happened there. It's very but... likely that someone who follows you um, instigated that. Mm-hmm. And there are some professional women's basketball players um, who follow me. So oh, well, brag about it. That's not it's not important. <laughs> It's not impossible, but um, I was just deeply embarrassed. And then I could not tell if people were laughing with me or at me. So then my anxiety started to go up as well. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm never going to tweet about the WNBA again because they just going to think I'm a fucking hoe. And I'm out here being a hoe for the WNBA, which is not even true. They are just so fine and I cannot help it. Why would anybody think that you're being you're not fucking in a. (laughs) You're not in a fucking know. BCBG dress at the fucking game or standing outside. No, but I am arena. about to get a jersey dress. I am finna do that. Yeah, I well, am finna everyone get me should. a jersey dress. I'm finna get a jersey dress. I should just dress. come back in style. That's completely and separate. And I really need the Mercury to win a game this week so that they will have a game four because I am going to Chicago to see this game four in my jersey dress. It says here that on the WA, WNBA.com that Shay's favorite movie wow. is A Low Down Dirty Shame. How does that make you feel? Have you seen the film? If so, what's your favorite line from it? And do you plan on watching it together on your first date? Um, so I love it. It makes me feel very happy that I date niggers because that's a very nigger answer. It is. It is very is much that. Yes. Favorite that yes. movie. Um uh, what else did you ask me? For, don't don't do that. Favorite portion <laughs> of the film? Will you be don't. watching it on your date? Okay, I'll I, answer I, the last one. That's yes. Okay. Favorite part of the movie? I could not tell you. It's been a very long time, but I did see a low down dirty shame. This is not one of the classic black. We believe you. You would not, tell the truth if you, you. hadn't. Seen I would. It. Yes. Thank you. I you would. <laughs> have no problem admitting those things. But you know, if I knew that I was going to meet Shea Petty, I might watch it beforehand just so I could be prepared because truly she is so fine. I feel that way about most of the people who play for the Mercury. Honestly, a very fine ass team. But Chicago also has a lot of fine ass players, which is why individual games has been hard for me to decide who I'm going to. The sky, for. the Chicago sky, specifically. I mean, yes, team, yes, correct. Wow, yeah, thank you. They mm-hmm. were confusing it with the other sky for sure, but um, sure. I, uh, I just, I love dykes, and the WNBA is full of dykes, and I just love. Is it Candace dykes. Parker that gets you soaked? Is it, it okay? <laughs> Who are we talking about here? Folks, please, God, no. (laughs) Candace Parker is beautiful, like stunning, but no. Um, Little too fam. It's it's Diamond to Shields for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. And (laughs) just, (laughs) it's primarily her, actually. (laughs) And I just, when I see her, I. Good um, choice. Yeah. There are other girls like who are attractive, like they're pretty, like they have cute faces, but also they be wearing their hair like long and loose, and that's not me. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I just assume when the girls wear a loose pony or they're straight. Um, I assume yes. I assume that if you wear those while playing the game that you're straight or if you wear if you make sure to wear makeup while playing the game i assume you're straight and that you want everybody else to also know that you're straight like do not confuse me with these dykes with they fucking locks (laughs) and they bare faces on tv (laughs) dana evans is done honey sick man and she can still be gay I mean, might be truly there good. Probably some I don't. Femme girls, some I don't femme know, but in the but and and I, you know, me and Fems get along great. Those are my sisters for real. But I would love, everybody knows my heart belongs to the Dykes. I just want to be friends with all of them. Huh, and I've been in love with Brittany Griner for so long that I will automatically yeah, to want to root on. for whatever. T- no, that's not what I was going to say. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, but, that's, okay. Glad yeah, to no, well, how I agree you feel with about whatever it. you're saying. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> glad to know how you feel about it. She was married. 
she is married so i yeah. do need to move on but i know what i was gonna say is that i'm probably just gonna automatically want whatever team she's on to win because i have loved her for so long but thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna when we get done i'm gonna think about the decisions i've made in my life okay see if i need to switch some things up so growth is always a good uh, yeah you know it's necessary and she is again married but yeah um yeah uh, Lord willing, I will be in Chicago for the game next week, and I cannot wait. All them dykes right in front of my face. Yes, it's what I deserve. <laughs> well, that's gonna be it for that, and we're gonna look at God. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, y'all. This week's episode is being brought to you by Talkspace. We're winding down towards the end of the year where a lot of us are going to be traveling a lot, whether you're getting your last minute parties in or getting ready to go and kick it with your family or whatever. There's a lot that's probably on your priority list, your schedule, a lot on your mind, and a lot of stress can come with that. So maybe it might be the right time for you to have someone to ease some of the burden listen to you, let you get some stuff off your chest. Talkspace is ready to help you start feeling better with a single message. They offer individual therapy, couples therapy, and medication prescription services. There are thousands of licensed therapists available for you to match with across dozens of specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Talkspace works around your schedule at your convenience with live video sessions and unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist. What I love about it is like, even aside from my own weekly therapy that I have with the therapist I've had for years and years, sometimes I pop into talk space because I just want to rant and I don't want to bother my actual therapist because she has two very young babies. And I know they're ready to be like, child, what now? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> no, she like, loves you. <laughs> and she, right. And she never will. This is why I have a therapist. Amen. And so if you need a little support to help you through the end of the year, or whatever it is that you might want to talk about. Uh, or if you want to start building towards a better upcoming year, Talkspace is here to help you. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com and get $100 off of your first month with the promo code READ. That's $100 off when you use code READ at Talkspace.com. Go give them a chat. And let's get back to the show. Okay, folks. It is now time for letters of yours. Mm-hmm. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. We may read them aloud on the show. <clears throat> Last week, we asked you to send us your letters about sex. Wow. Can't believe that oh, was my did. suggestion. <clears throat> oh, but um, y'all did that. <laughs> oh, God. And so let's just dive right in. Here's a very short, quick question from Deja, who says, if you could take any of your bodies back, would it be none, some, most, or all? If I could take my bodies back, would it be you know, some? Like niggas, no, you, yeah. I mean, I know them. Would it be right. some, <laughs> none, most, or, or all? all? What the fuck is this list? I feel for anybody who would say all. Right? Jesus. Um, I think for me, it would... I actually don't regret sleeping with anybody I've slept with. I don't either. Which is weird. <laughs> now that I'm really thinking about it, it seems a, like maybe one of them because she ended up being a little bit like she's kind of a weirdo now. Like I wouldn't want people to associate me with her. But even then, it's not like the sex was bad. I wouldn't take it back because of the sex. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess this could be any reason I wanted, but I don't think there's oh, anybody yeah. that I. Oh, I mean, if it's because I hate my ex now, then it would be all but like three of them. <laughs> so <laughs> then that would be a most. But it's like taking it back. Like, well, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, I mean. It's a hypothetical, okay? I mean, I know. I'm just saying I don't, I don't think that I need to. Oh, personally. okay. It's just, it is what it is. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm exhausted and don't feel fiery. <laughs> I just <laughs> <don't> like try, <laughs> Like, take it back for what? It happened. It is what it is. I don't give a fuck if I still speak to you or not. Hate you. You hate me. It is what it is. We fuck. It sucks. It is. Moving. Yeah. Moving on. Up. I mean, that's a very it's mature sad. way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay. Just, whatever. <laughs> Our next question comes from Tay, who says, my man and I have been together for over a decade and married for the past five years. He's the only person I have ever slept with, so I don't have anything to compare him to. But I can't help but feel like our sex could be better because, frankly, it used to be better. 
I try to drop little hints. <laughs> I try to drop hints and show him things that we can bring into the bedroom or tricks we can do. And he just brushes it off, brushes it off and says that he's a basic guy. Besides this, he is actually a great man who is a provider and a one a provider and a wonderful father, but I am tired of faking it in the bedroom. How do I express that I'm not satisfied without hurting his feelings? Please note that his dick does work and it is above average, but it is not being operated correctly. <laughs> Any advice would about, help? I mean, I guess you mean in size. Size, yeah. Love you guys, Tay. <laughs> How does she? Oh, this is her husband, <laughs> right? And she's like thirty, and they've been together since she was ten, or they've been together for <laughs> over a decade, right? <laughs> just, um, since she was probably like eighteen, nineteen, or so. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you say it without hurting his feelings? I think first you got to let go of that without hurting his feelings. Right. I'm like, like who gives how that? do I say it? <laughs> how do I say it with tact? Maybe not. How do I say it without hurting his feelings? Because some things are just going to hurt people's feelings. Your dick ain't what it used to be is going to hurt his feelings. You don't have to say I, it like that. But <laughs> and bro, you're a grown ass man, bro. Mm-hmm. More on that on the, at 11. <laughs> your feelings, bitch. Anyway, so. Yeah, I agree. If we can't just say explicitly, here's my clitoris or like, um, I really want to use this toy or whatever the fuck it is that you're talking about. I mean, how else do you say, hey, this is what I'm looking for? Do you say it like in a sexy way during the act? Like, do you just unpack Maybe. things do you fucking think create a scavenger hunt for this nigga <laughs> do you like what the fuck are you yes little pussy presents all over the house like maybe you could try some stuff like that to bring some of the excitement back into it maybe that's what y'all are missing i mean y'all have been together for a long time so can it could rewind? just be that things are getting monotonous for you yeah in the, go, can you go back to where she says about bringing stuff into the room? What is she saying she's been doing? She she's been she, trying to drop hints and um, try to show him things that we they can bring into the bedroom or things that they could do. And he just says that he's a basic guy. Like he ain't trying to do all right. that extra. <clears throat> okay. So she didn't really get too specific <laughs> In terms of the way that she's dropped these hands or what mm-hmm. these things are. Um, so I will just say you have done that. You know what I yep. mean? And he has told you what you're working with in mm-hmm. terms of, you know, what he has to offer. So at this point, I just feel like you need to just be straight up. You know, like I feel unfulfilled. Sexual mm-hmm. chemistry and satisfaction is important. In a relationship, in a marriage especially. And I am afraid that our connection will deteriorate if we don't try to spice it up. So can we try Mm. to fucking spice it up? You maybe not you might be surprised and you might motherfucking find out like you actually do like some shit <laughs> that you never considered because you've just been planning on being basic so motherfucking time. And I don't think you need to say that whole little tail end of the shit. <laughs> I really do that. <laughs> You can just focus on being like, look, I want to have more fun. I'm like, I'm yeah. kind of bored and I feel like it's going to affect our relationship in the long run at some point. Yeah. And then if it's just kind of like, well, what do you want to do? At I have point, a scroll. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I definitely have a scroll. But I would maybe like if it really gets to a point where you're not making any headway, then I would maybe even start. I would consider going to like couples therapy or something or like a sex therapist maybe even because he oh yeah he could like i i don't i've never had a sex therapist specifically i'm sure that they you know will do couple sessions and individual ones but that could be a thing where you both speak to someone separately and then individually so like you could talk about your sexual interests Mm -hmm. desires health uh origins i don't know words and he could All do the that. same thing without, like, the <laughs> yeah. pressure of you being in the same room or whatever. Like, 
And the only reason I'm even suggesting all of this extra work is because y'all have been together for so long and you're married. If right. he was just your boyfriend, I would be like, leave the nigga. You know I mean? <laughs> but because saying I want to try something in the bedroom and you're not picking up the hint that like I want to do something new, I, w- I would probably just have broken up with a, a somebody I wasn't with for that long. Right. Yeah, but this and is different. It's like because you're saying that you this is the only sexual partner you've ever had, which is like. Ew, Ooh, this yeah. is the, it's like my nigga, y- y- she is the only, this is the only person that yeah. you have been, that this is the only person. No, you are the only person that this person <laughs> has had sex with. I'm sorry. Right. And you know that. And now mama is saying, I'm bored. Rock her world. What the fuck are you doing? Right. Like, because it's like, if I know that there are other fish out here fucking all around the goddamn sea and you're the <laughs> only one and you're committed to just be like, well, yeah, no, nah, I'm basic. How am I not supposed to think what is the what is the grass giving on the other side? I want right. to run my toes through that grass. I want to mm-hmm. roll around in that grass. I want to mow that grass. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Un- that grass is mine. These I mean, niggas be so fucking comfortable and y'all let them like, and you sitting up here talking about some, how do I not hurt this motherfucking feeling? Bitch. If he wasn't getting a nut, do you think he would say something to you about Hello, it? I mean, my. <laughs> so <sighs> I think. You and know... you know, the sex would be better too. It's not even like he's right. blasting you and you have like no scale. You know what I'm saying? For how mm-hmm. sex, because he's the only person you ever find. You know that it could be better because you've had better sex before. Right. Which is rough. <laughs> That's a rough position to be and in. And you're still trying to be nice. Yeah. So. I think you have to ask yourself, does this man not know that I'm unsatisfied or does he not care? And if he doesn't know, then you need to make it super clear. So like, (laughs) just lay it all out there and be like, listen, it's not hitting the way it used to. Or, I mean, if I were you, I would maybe try to drop a bigger hint first because you said you've been dropping little ones. So I would just be dropping bigger ones. Like, Mm -hmm. hmm, I don't know. Like, guess I will go charge up my (laughs) my little buddies and get ready for my (laughs) relaxation evening or something. Like, I don't that is very awkward but yeah i would I either say. try to be less subtle or i would just outright say it because you know are you really are you willing to fake it for the rest of your life just so this man's ego or pride might not feel a little hurt <laughs> you're his wife he should want to please you so yeah i was gonna say um, yeah that for me i think my less subtle hint would be a very short, tight dress, six inch platform heels. Oh, okay. And my yes. bitch is coming over at promptly oh, yes. 10 45 yes. p.m. to go down to the clubhouse with me. <laughs> Don't wait up. Oops. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying yeah. cheat on him. I'm just saying, like, go have you. A I'm good time. bored. So I'm going to go have a good time and I'm going to make you sweat, bitch. Yeah. I'm going out because toxic I'm not. feminine. <laughs> When I think about what I could be doing here at home, it doesn't sound as fun as going out. Like, are you motherfucking kidding me, nigga? Are you kidding? Like, yeah. bitch, all right. You're going to see me when I have this motherfucking get up on and me and my bitches hit the motherfucking uh, the streets right. in this fucking Honda Civic. Yes. But say something. You know your man. You know how to say things to him in a, a delicate way. So do that, but be real. You You deserve to have good sex. Oof. Where's Jesus mine? God. Right. And you only 30, girl. Oh my God. You do not want to spend the rest of your life being like, oh yeah, right there. Mm, don't stop. On Reddit in your 60s, still never Mm-mm. had an orgasm. <laughs> don't. So uh yeah, work up the nerves, have the conversation. Hope it goes well. Our next question hmm, comes from Candy. Candy says, I'm a black trans woman and I've gained a lot of weight over the past couple of years. And a lot of that has settled in my ass. I used to be able to make a number of penis sizes work. But earlier this year, I tried to sleep with a man who was not very well endowed and it just did not work. He could not even get through the cheeks to get to the hole. (laughs) Love how Candy just laid it out there. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, why, you know, read around. After that experience, I started asking for dick pics. 
Well, that's my girl. Yeah. The problem is I don't know what to say when it's too small and I end up mostly ghosting these men. How would you handle this situation, especially after you ask the poor man to photograph his penis for you? I always end up feeling awful. Please help. Thanks, Candy. <laughs> Candy, you're awesome. What a sweetheart. Right. <laughs> Not you caring about men's feelings. <laughs> I mean, Candy. Hmm. I don't think that, like, it depends, right? If this is someone that you have maybe been on a couple of dates with or something or someone that you have like you've had like good conversation with and everything's going well and then you get mm-hmm. to nudes and it's not going to work and then you're just completely silent. Yeah, that's a little not nice. Um and I feel like there isn't necessarily anything wrong with being like I don't know if you can handle all this ass. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's because it, that's just true. It's just true, you know. And of course, the nigga's gonna be like, "You have no way No, right. I don't. Right. Thank you so much for playing <laughs> or for. I'm telling for you coming. that you're not tall enough. You are the ride. weakest link. Goodbye. Unfortunately, yes. Um. So yeah, I really feel like there's nothing wrong with being honest in that way. If you you know feel like a response is just like the right thing to do given the nature of the connection you've had thus far. But if we're just talking about like casual, you're in my DMs or we're on the apps or, or something like app, that, yeah. like who the fuck cares? <laughs> like, I don't. Right. What? You can let go of uh, that's honestly, that was my first assumption. So that's why I'm like, you can let go of caring about their feelings. If this happened on an app, <laughs> because yeah. people are here to hook up. You don't reply no more. He will just move on to the next one. Like, I wouldn't feel any sense of obligation. I'm against ghosting when it's something somebody you have a connection with. And then you just all of a sudden decide to block them and never contact them again. Mm. But that situation, I just don't even think that's something that you should be feeling bad about, Candy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, other people who frequent the apps or this type of vibe can maybe give their opinion, but I've just figured that's just kind of like part of the experience. You know, it's just sometimes people are like, oh yeah, no, and they stop reaching out. And I know for some people, like, that sends them into a seething rage and like none other. And like, I've seen count, especially, especially When it's someone who is black. And especially when it's someone who is Mm. black who is messaging someone who's not. When like when you hit that ghost, man, are you a nigger? Man, (laughs) are you a monkey? Like when you stop chatting with they motherfucking ass, do they get like awful? Like some people really completely 180 and become terrible, 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 terrible people. Again, because it's an app. It's like, what are you? Uh, yeah. What, you're no not going to come here. and find right. me at the Starbucks that I'm no, at. No, you're going to block me and right. forget about me in three days at the Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. people just feel like they can say whatever, do whatever. So I feel like if, if that's what it's giving, I would not put too much pressure on simply just being like, oh, yeah, no, this is going to be a waste of both of ours. Right. Let me leave it at that. But if it is someone that you're, like, cool with, you have a connection with, you've been vibing, chatting for a bit, and it's like, oh, I don't know. I would just be like, oh, I don't know if you can... I don't know. Right. Like, I'm letting you know I don't, right now. I'm just saying. It might be a little too much. I would also add that I will necessarily... I wouldn't, if I were you, I would not necessarily write them off if, if like, you're on an app Reach. or whatever... And you're like, this nigga, you know, his conversation is decent and he's fine. And then you Preach. see the dick and it's like, mm, I don't know if he can make it, girl. Let him get, give let him, him the try. opportunity to see let if he can. Let him try. Preach. Because what if he makes it work? I was going to say what that shit too. What if it works? Preach. Girl. I was going to say <laughs> so that too. I would too. say, yeah, if, if you feeling him otherwise, <laughs> shit, what's the harm in trying it? Or in this scenario, you don't like it. You don't have to talk to him again. And there's so many great ways to have sex or be engaged in sex that don't include penetration. There is also that. Okay. Like, I mean, if being fucked is just your, like, I need it, I respect that. Yeah. But again, if you're vibing and 
I, I just say, hey, why not give it yeah. a shot anyway? <laughs> but <laughs> yes, you know yourself and your body more than we do. <laughs> Right. That's what I'm saying. If you like, mm, I don't know. Now, if you know for a fact that ain't going to work and that ain't going to work for you, then yeah. fine. But I'm saying if it's in that gray area, girl, just going to give it a shot. Because mm-hmm. what if that's the best dick of your life? You never know. You never know, girl. That could be the best dick of your life. And you almost wrote it off because it was maybe an inch smaller than what you thought it should be. I don't, Some of these I'm niggas not, are built different. I'm just saying, perhaps, you know, that whole motion in the ocean thing. My experience with, you know, real live dicks is limited, but. Climbing your ass like Discovery Zone. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just, I know they're capable of a lot of things. I know they can appear one way and then suddenly appear another. And Very true as well. You can't tell by the size of it whether the person who owns it knows what to do with it. This so. is a fact. So, Ask uh, um, the last letter. But, <laughs> yeah, ask old girl trying to. <laughs> <laughs> who's upset with her damn husband just it's above so, average you know have lo- uh, have luck <laughs> good luck and have fun out there girl um oh we have a question from a gay man about poppers but i don't know if we should read about <laughs> poppers on the damn show <laughs> i really don't know much about it um well yeah that's what he's saying that he didn't really know what poppers were but he tried them about eight, about eight months ago and they have changed his fucking life anyone to know what we knew about poppers do we have any feelings about them are we pro or con and of course i have to be the mom and be like poppers are so dangerous don't do that (laughs) but also anal sex is completely optional in my world and so (laughs) i can understand the appeal of poppers if anal sex is completely not optional (laughs) in your world but i do feel like i have to be like the auntie who's like oh my god that's not safe you could Mm. all kinds of y'all know the risks but and you're sniffing yeah right so i just feel like i have to say that like i can't endorse it because i don't want nothing to happen to y'all i just can't help but think about the vaccine but i will also say i know a lot of gay men and just about all of them are like, bitch, I'm just saying it's something about that dick on poppers. Everything is different. So I've never tried poppers uh, <laughs> during sex or anything like that. The only time I've ever done it was like at a party. Like it was like a circuit party or something like that. And I just remember like it immediately rushing to my head and feeling very warm and then just being like, this is strange. I don't like it. Mm, so you didn't like the feeling of it. It was like. Like, I I understood it in that moment because prior to that, I was just like, why do people like what? Like, I, I understood that people say, oh, like it helps relax your body, relax your body. Yeah, it relaxes your sex, it relaxes your genitals, your asshole and your um others. Yes. So, mm. you know, for those of you taking dick, it can really apparently make the experience a lot more fun. But I respect that. Um, I mean, yeah, I do too. I just, you know, I feel like a worried auntie who's just like, no, my babies, I don't want y'all doing that. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really, uh, outside of that, given it much of a thing. I I don't know. I, I feel like, um, I don't know how to say what I want to say that in a way that makes sense. Oh, I bet you do. like i i how do i mm, it's almost like training okay like if i were a z warrior i wouldn't want to use the poppers i need to get myself and my body to this place mm. without cheating to know my threshold to get there and understand what I'm capable of. Yes. Okay. You know I, I understand. Mean? I do. And, it's Breath of the Wild. You know, without the cheating, without the yeah. DLC. Right. Like you don't want to, you don't want to start the game for the first time and then immediately go fight Ganon. Like, girl, are you crazy? You need to, you need to go through the uh, experience so that you're strong enough to do what you were meant to do. Yes. 
Yes. I but also, I have not been fucked by like MacBooks and some of this shit that the girls be doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, like, I really do. Like, maybe for some people, it's like, I, what choice might you have? I don't know. You know, like, oh my God. if you're taking a ring light up there, honey, then I don't know if you're like, you oh, might just have to okay. do what you have to do. Uh- <laughs> Okay, you know, all right. I did not consider that. God y'all be damn. sitting on Clorox wipe scans and all kinds of big ass. Okay. Things. And in that case, um, like whatever works, but be careful, I guess. So yeah, I don't know that's what's our. In there. It's uh, some kind of nitrile, nitrite. It's something, some kind of, some form of that, and it's just you know, not. You can Google it. Not a great idea, but I understand at the same. So time, many of so. the gays do it. Take take care of yourselves as best as you can. <laughs> um, let's see. Our our last letter this week comes from Renee, who says, I'm a 33-year-old straight woman, and back in 2020, I ended my most serious relationship, got a new job, and moved across the country. This year, I've slowly tried to dip my toes back into the dating pool, and I have been physically intimate with a couple of people. But I've been su- surprised to discover how uncomfortable and damn near terrified I am of being naked around new people. I am fat and have been for all my adult life, but I've never felt quite as bad and insecure about it as I do this year. It not only makes it hard to actually enjoy sex and connect on a deeper physical level, but it seems to trigger a sense of panic since I assume anyone who sees my naked body will be repulsed. Has body image ever been an issue that has affected your sex life before? If so, what did you do to work through it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Love you both, Renee. Yes. Oh, yes. Renee. <laughs> Absolutely. It has. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody who has never had a body image issue. Hard like, pressed, girl. Truly. I really yeah. have like denied myself of sex before for a ridiculous amount of time because of body image issues and mm-hmm. insecurities and stuff like that before. So I totally understand this. Um, I mean, I definitely would say that again, if you're not like speaking to someone about this professionally, I would definitely uh, give that a try. But there's also like a lot of non cringe resources online <laughs> for, um, you know, just help in terms of affirmation and mm-hmm. like um, working on, you know, your self-esteem and stuff like that. Because like, truthfully, how do I say this in a way that doesn't sound like a ridiculous? Like, you, you're, you don't have to look like whatever, you know, the internet and the media is currently saying is like, the standard of Mm -hmm. sexy in terms of your body, your face, your hair, or whatever. Especially if you sleep with men. (laughs) Like, especially. Just have to remind you. (laughs) And like. Especially. I know that like, right now, because there's so much more of an uptake in people, specifically women, of all body like the body positivity movement is so much mm-hmm. more of a thing now that there yeah. is of course a pushback against it so because there are mm-hmm. more people i think now than ever women again specifically that are like i love my body the way that it is i'm healthy like kiss my ass basically there you can just are mind your business about yeah mind your business entirely actually everything to do with it you can just mind your business there are uh, obviously more people who are like, yeah, well, actually, I mean, because the media is trying to make everybody right. annoying. You know, so there are like, I've noticed more people who are trying to excuse being fat phobic today by just being like, well, you know, Ray, 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 blah, blah, blah. Let me, you know, just spew a bunch of rhetoric that's hundreds of years old and worthless. Um, so, to that effect, I guess it makes a lot of sense to me uh, why, while there is a lot of support out there, it's still hard to feel mm-hmm. it sometimes uh, because right. people are trash. People are trash and people are waiting to be awful, <laughs> like all of the time. Right. Um, and the support is usually directed at a girl who looks a certain way. And it's not for the girls who aren't. And it's just basically like, if 
thin white women are the ideal, then like a slightly chubbier white woman is just she's mm-hmm. the she's the white woman prototype for those body positivity girls right. like Ashley Graham's like right 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 <laughs> the fact that people are like yes it's okay to be fat like Ashley Graham when Ashley Graham is like maybe a size ten right <laughs> right it's like oh okay <laughs> so I can see how actually fat people would be like. This is clearly not about me because y'all yeah. don't celebrate people who look like me. And you can just look at Lizzo, who unfortunately is like the default fat black girl that we talk about. But like even Lizzo, who could say all of those things like, oh, I'm in such great shape and I'm healthier than you and I do this and that. Like they still drag her for the way she looks. So mm-hmm. it, I can definitely see why people who are like, well, damn, look at how they do Lizzo and I'm bigger than her. Or I'm darker than her. Or I'm whatever else than her. Like, of course, you feel less like your body is part of like this movement of stuff to be accepted. So, yeah, it's easy to see why people don't feel connected to that and and, or how that doesn't make them feel better about themselves i will just say as somebody who is also fat um i would just not sleep with people that don't make me feel like they want to fuck me like right now Mm -hmm. i would just not sleep with anybody who was like And that includes like somebody that I'm vulnerable enough with to be like, oh, I feel self-conscious about X, Y, Z. If they don't immediately turn around and be like, oh, let me fix that. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not, this is not a person for me to sleep with. Right. Because it's just, you know, if you're feeling vulnerable, then having sex with somebody, the wrong person can put you in a worse place. Mm -hmm. Because now you blaming yourself for whatever this asshole did and bringing it back on like you and how you know how bad you should feel about yourself as opposed to like being able to put your energy and your efforts into something that is good for you so um yeah i just don't sleep with people who aren't into me thankfully that has not been an issue but um yeah i i feel you because it can be rough um but you know, it's a live for every pot, like I've said, and it's not even like you are having issues getting chose. It sounds like you have been fucking right. just don't feel comfortable about right. it. So I would say, you know, if you feel comfortable saying something, then do that. But if you don't, then just go based off of how they treat you. Right. Are you being treated in the way you want to be treated? Do you feel desired by this person? Like they can see you. That's what I mean when I say like. Like even you know, with your clothes on, they they can see your body. They they there for a reason. Don't think that you know. I mean, again, I know it's like the way that you feel about you and like Crystal saying you. You sounds like you have partners, but like when I say like, like especially when we're talking about niggas, like there are niggas out there that will be like, oh, I don't care about that. And I'm going to show you that right. I don't care about or that. who like it or who prefer it. Like right, they're definitely out there. Right, and so like that's who you should be throwing it at and nobody yeah. else, you know? Right. Um, but also like, you don't have to like loving your body being at peace in your skin. Doesn't, you don't have to simultaneously be like an ad advocate, you know, like you don't have to right. like be like, here is my soapbox and I stand alongside that. You, like just like feel good about yourself. You know, you don't have to, like, go and and do, you know, the end of the whiz in the streets. (laughs) Can't we feel a brand new day? Yeah. You know, just get to a place where you're, like, comfortable in Mm -hmm. your skin and yourself and whether you're naked or not naked or whatever. And hopefully, you know, recognizing that the people around you love you, you know, fat Mm -hmm. and all can be the beginning of you being like, child. As you are. Yeah. Reminding yourself that like you deserve all the things that everybody else deserves, no matter what you look like. <laughs> and you deserve all the kindness and love and compassion that you show to the people you love. So, you know, talk to yourself nice and see if that doesn't help your self image. But, you know, I just I promise you, you are not the <laughs> the one person on this earth who is undesirable in a sexual way like nobody else on the planet 
is sexually attracted to you. I promise you that is not the case. At all. Regardless of what you look like. So best of luck to you. Let's wrap it up there. Again, send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. I'm going to take another quick break and then we'll be right back. Hey, y'all, this time of year can be busy, but HelloFresh recipes save time that you'd otherwise spend meal planning, shopping and chopping so you can get back to the things that matter. HelloFresh's family friendly menu is a big win for back to school season with easy, delicious recipes for easy dinners, girl. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week from vegetarian meals to extra special gourmet options. There's something for absolutely everybody to enjoy with recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. This fall count on seasonal recipes like pumpkin cinnamon rolls and Friendsgiving ready sides, as well as fresh, high quality ingredients that travel from the farm to your front door in less than a week. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need where you can easily change your delivery day, food preferences and plan size or skip a week whenever you need to. HelloFresh just makes everything so much easier for me when it comes to actually cooking for myself as I need to make it as easy of a process as possible because otherwise I will not do it. And HelloFresh just makes it the absolute simplest, easiest way for me to take care of myself. So go to HelloFresh.com slash the read 14 and use code the read 14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash the read 14 and code the read 14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. Let them know we sent you and let's move on. This week's episode is also being brought to you by Policy Genius Life. Try shopping for life insurance with Policy Genius. You can get free quotes while you're giving out free candy during the Holloway, Halloween season. Unless you charge for candy, which I wouldn't be mad at. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. You could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. Just head to policygenius.com and in minutes you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. When you're ready to apply, the Policy Genius team will handle the paperwork and scheduling all for free. Plus, Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. Eligible applicants can can get covered in at least a week or as little as a week, thanks to an award-winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam requirement for a simple phone call. This exclusive policy was recently rated number one by Forbes Advisor, and this is why Policy Genius has earned thousands of five-star reviews across Trustpilot and Google. Head to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Now let's get back to the show. Finish up. Okay, we are back. It is now time for the read. It is. <clears throat> Would you like Take me to away. go first? Sure. Okay. Um, so my read this week goes out. <laughs> Have you heard um of the comments made by um this campaign manager for these Republicans in Connecticut? No. So her name is Mary Beeman. And um Yukon was having a virtual forum on race and education. And in the chat, she wrote, helping kids of color to feel like they belong has a negative effect on white, Christian, or conservative kids. I'm sorry? Again, (laughs) these people are at a virtual forum on race and education. (sighs) This whole debate is coming up because white people are arguing about critical race theory once again. Of course, this miserable, wretched bitch is against it. and. You know she's white because she was dumb enough to write this in a chat under her real name. Like, I just feel like anybody else would have known not to say something this blatantly fucking racist. Like, you have to be a dumbass. Why would Mm -hmm. you do this? In a like this was completely avoidable. It's not like you were on stage and said something you didn't mean to say, but oh well, it was streaming live. Like, you could have stopped yourself. At so many points along the way, you could have typed it out and then deleted it. Maybe that would have got rid of the itch for you. But you really decided to comment publicly and say, helping kids of color to feel they belong has a negative effect on white, Christian, or conservative kids. To that, I would say, bitch and (laughs) Correct. White children are going to feel challenged 
when kids of color feel like they belong because they are used to us not belonging. What's not clicking? We're talking about race and education because of this reason. Like, yeah, it's supposed to. Are we are we supposed to act like white people aren't supposed to give anything up? <laughs> mm. Hello? Bitch, are you dumb? Yes. That is the whole point. You're supposed to give it up. <laughs> that privilege, that feeling of being the default, that feeling of feeling like no matter where you are, you belong. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> what about that? The, the incredible irony of this is that critical race theory is not even being taught in the town. <laughs> oh, oh, God. This is not even... They're nerves. arguing about how critical race theory shouldn't be taught and critical race theory isn't being taught. Critical race theory, also known as the truth, is not being taught. So... <laughs> What are we supposed to do this? She came back. She posted something on Facebook talking about her. Her comments were per- poorly worded and oh, taken out yeah. of context. Bitch, in what context? <laughs> in what context is this not racist? I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Please tell me. It doesn't even like it does not. No part of it makes sense. You did not have to type it. And it did not even have to be a thing that you commented on at all because the theory itself is not even being taught to your school, to your kids. You're in no danger of this. You just had to let it out. You just had to make sure (laughs) that we knew what. That niggas need to stay in their place. That's the message you send it to me. I assume that's the message that you send it to everybody else. (sighs) <sighs> I just don't understand. I, I'm i really tired of this critical race theory argument, period. Because <laughs> most of these districts, these, these school districts are not in any danger of the actual truth of this country being taught to their children. It's not even being taught in most of our colleges and universities. You're literally just mad because black people are starting to say, hey, no more of this blatant bullshit. You're literally just mad because the things y'all have been doing are being talked about more openly. That's literally your whole issue. I'm not I'm not going to take that seriously. It's impossible. Y'all have been comfortable for entirely too long. And again, not even your struggle. So just find a problem. Just find a real issue. Get a life because it's boring. It's really tired at this point. (laughs) I'm just over it. Those of us who are Christian are just feeling like we're being bullied out of our thought processes and students are being victimized socially and, and emotionally because they said black lives don't matter. How dare you? That's literally what you sound like. Go to hell. <laughs> That's it. I'm just done. I'm over it. All right. What do you have this week? All right. Oh, God. <laughs> so for me this week. What happened? I'm just going to say, all right, I'll, st- where should I? Oh. I'll start with this Sage Steel person. Sage Steele is or was uh, an anchor for ESPN. Um, But she got chopped recently for taking her dumbass on a podcast with a white man and complaining about vaccine mandates, saying they're sick and scary. And oh my goodness, why would Disney require that we get uh, vaccines for work? So there was that, which... Whatever. I don't even, I have nothing to say about that. What I did want to discuss, though, is the audacity of this individual. Um, Because she brought up Barack Obama in a discussion about uh, blackness. Apparently, she was left out of a discussion or some sort of, um, like, they had... 
uh, some sort of panel or something like that on the black experience over at her job. And she was not asked to participate. Um, a quick Google on Sage Steel would probably let you know why anybody black want to hear nothing that she has to say. Mm-mm. But that wasn't good <laughs> enough. Her and so we're talking about Barack Obama now. And she said oh, she found man. it fascinating that Barack Obama would uh mark himself as black on like the census or anything like that, seeing as how his black father was nowhere in the picture and he was raised by his white mother and grandmother. Sage Steele herself is also proudly biracial and I guess claims oh, mixed yeah. race, etc. Oh et cetera. good. Thank God. Oh thanks. So I don't have to claim this bitch then. Woo <laughs> I love when the trash takes itself out. Please leave. I just want to say you like You know, you can call yourself whatever you want to. Um, No one's ever going to treat you like a white woman, a mixed woman. You're never going to be looked at as anything but a light-skinned nigga. Like, that's it. Um, You know this. You're aware of this. I've watched clips of you allowing white men to grab your hair and tell the TV people that it is real and soft, to which you said nothing. Like, ma'am, madam, you're a nigga. Just like everybody else. Of course she does. But, like, her... Her criticism Ooh. of Barack Obama claiming black is that, like, well, your mama that raised you was white and your daddy wasn't nowhere around. So why do you <laughs> consider yourself to be black? His, even his <laughs> white mama probably said, Barack, guess what? <laughs> Love you much. But here where we at, this is what time it is. And even if that wasn't what his mama told, I don't know nothing about that portion of his history. <laughs> he knows what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One drop, two drop, three drop, four. It don't matter how many drops are in the motherfucking theory. Nobody over here is treating you like anything but a nigga. Mm-hmm. Ask around. She's the only black person in her family. That's her goddamn problem. Like, I know so, her kids are technically a quarter or whatever, but none of them pass for black. You look at their family pictures and it's like, and I and I bet you that's exactly how she wanted it. Probably. She probably is so thrilled that those kids do not look black. Just shut your ass up. Like, I don't understand. Like, where's the... Raggedy. Oh, why would you check that? The, I find it fascinating. Because what? What? Well, Niggas been done with her. I just love that she claims mixed. I love it. Thank you so much. Woo. Thank you, girl. I appreciate it. Secondly, I I really am not going to spend much time talking about this comedy special on Netflix. I just have three points to make. Two of them I'm certain I've made before. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one. I just want to, like, discuss some of the common uh, responses and complaints I've seen from some of you very daft, very bitch-made, sheep-like fans um, that have been just diving through glass to um, defend the latest uh, transphobic power hour over at Netflix. Um... And so, first things first, uh, you guys are too sensitive. You're just so sensitive. They're, they're jokes. You're just so sensitive. I just, again, find it funny that this comment is coming from so many um, mostly cis, straight people, a lot of <laughs> which are men. Um, I just want to remind you that we still live in a generation. We still live in a time and in a society where young girls and women are being raised and taught um, to be polite to y'all, even when they don't need to be, even Mm -hmm. when they probably shouldn't be, um, to kind of find the safest way to um, deal with your advances, however creepy they may be, unwanted, um, 
unrequested, aggressive, disrespectful. Like so many women are still taught not to hurt your feelings as men because you will kill them. <laughs> like you will. Mm. You yeah. and you still do to this day. Um, yeah. jokes and all, if somebody threatens your masculinity or manhood, you will murder them. And it still happens. So I don't understand where the sensitivity part is coming from. Also, it wasn't all jokes. Like a good portion of the shit that was said in this special is just the nigga's opinion. <laughs> So, like, yeah, there are jokes that are then set up from that. But the reason that it's a joke and the reason that you think it's funny is because these are things that you believe. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. many white comics, straight and otherwise, have been taken to task for jokes that they have made towards black community, you know, Latin people, Asian people, whatnot, and get their things stripped mm. as they many times have deserved. So I'm just like confused at the confusion. The second thing um, is that, again, uh, big Dave Chappelle fan, usually when I would see anything related to Dave Chappelle that was like new or even old, I would immediately do a backflip of glee. When I saw this, I didn't even see a trailer, press release, one sheet. I saw nothing. The only reason I heard about it is because I was on my PlayStation. I went to the little movie app section part of it. And you know how it'll pop up and be like, this is what's on HBO Max this week. And this is what's on... Uh, Netflix and Hulu and what that came up like little ad for mm. the special and I sighed like I exhaled <laughs> typically I would you be already like know. yeah and I immediately knew still recognizing this man's brilliance and like yeah. you know all that he's done I knew what I was getting but when I, I all I had to go on was this little picture and I was like I already know what this is about to be and that was more than correct yeah. like so for me Again, it's like I saw a thread of tweets from uh, someone who identifies as trans that I believe says that they work at Netflix. Um, mm. And this person was like, you know, being trans is actually kind of funny if you know what you're talking about and mm. can like respect the people and the source material. Mm. Um, and that's not what happens here. Because he don't give a fuck about any of these people, just like y'all don't. And so, unfortunately, what happens, even if I, I can't even, I can't say even if I were a transphobe, because if I were a transphobe, I'd probably think the shit was fucking hilarious. Because because y'all do. Y'all, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, they're still like... There's still, like, jokes from the boys' locker room in the 1960s. They're yeah. just hack-ass, like, oh, nothing about it is even, like, worthy of, e it's not, it's, they suck, the jokes still were bad. They weren't yeah. even, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you I probably do. laughed because y'all motherfuckers don't care to, at all. And honestly, at this point, with this being, like, what, his fourth fucking special where he's coming right. and saying some transphobic shit, it's like, a big part of the reason why this is so present in this shit is because they know that you want it and you expect right. it and you hate these people. And so it's like, fuck yeah, Miss Jenner right. again. That's f And so it's like, even like so many, so many people are like, oh, you're offended. Oh, you're just mad or whatever. And yeah, a lot of people are offended and a lot of people are mad. Me, I'm tired and I'm bored. You know, mm. <laughs> like I'm. Yeah. And then because lastly. we've seen it. <laughs> like we've seen it. And also heard these quote unquote jokes before Dave Chappelle. Mm, yeah, he didn't invent the transphobic. N they weren't even clever. There was so much about it where I was just like, this is just bad. Like, 
And y'all had, it's like all the same talking points. You're conditioned to literally come back and then say a whole bunch of the same shit that you said, the last special, the last special, the last special. That still doesn't make any fucking sense. And telling anybody who had a criticism, oh, clearly you didn't watch special. I did. I I, I, I did watch it. Yeah, I did I watch did. it. So and that I would know what I was cussing at. Exactly. You think that I'm really finna sit up here in front of this motherfucking microphone and not, at, like, mama, it wasn't great. It wasn't. Like, it, mm-hmm. and it, and I'm sorry for this nigga to be like, oh, I've met uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Wonderful person. Why didn't we stop there? Why did we stop there? Bitch, clearly you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, oh! Caitlyn Jenner's the worst! The Like, you're so out of touch and it's reflective in what you are attempting to write about, but you don't care because you know, ultimately, it doesn't really fucking matter what you're writing about or how the jokes are delivered because all you people are going to eat it up anyway because ultimately, it's just fuck these people, period, and they're mm. too fucking sensitive. Even though this same type of discourse, energy, debate, all of that stuff can easily, you can find reflected in all kinds of other spaces, all kinds of other groups. It's just, don't nobody give a fuck about trans people. So everybody is just like, yeah, eat a dick. Dave Chappelle's king. Um, Last but not least, to everyone who's like, oh, they're trying to cancel this man. They're trying to cancel him. 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 Girl, on... He has done this with Netflix numerous times. (laughs) If they were going to cancel him for that, it would have been done. No one, I damn sure wasn't shocked when Netflix literally stepped forward and was like, hold our nuts. We don't give a fuck. (laughs) Because, of course, duh, like it's, it. obviously they don't. You know what I mean? Who's getting canceled, bitch? Nobody's fucking canceling this nigga. That's not a real thing. And the amount of niggas who are subscribing to the term cancel culture now as if it is not something that was created by white spe- white people specifically to walk over all of the very valid criticisms, <laughs> protests, and calls to actions that black people were making. Now, all of a sudden, Dave Chappelle talk about cancel culture and is like, yep, the gays are to cancel. Cancel who? Who? How? How? Why? He's like the biggest, highest paid motherfucking rich ass goddamn comic walking on feet. Like, it doesn't make any... What the fuck are y'all motherfuckers talking about? Cancel what? How? Who? When? You're on Netflix. You're on Netflix. Where? And even if... <laughs> even if... Niggas are they dumb. took this nigga specials down, right? He will still work. He'll still tour. He will be fine. He's already fucking wealthy and he will continue to work. If he doesn't have a Netflix deal, he can easily go and shop a deal with someone else who will likely pay him for it. But even if he doesn't get another deal streaming somewhere, whatever the fuck, y'all motherfuckers will give him money at all of his shows more than than ever. If you don't believe me, take a look at R. Kelly's numbers. He's currently 517% better. His sales are... 517% higher than normal since his guilty conviction. Mind you, again, we know this nigga is a (laughs) rapist. We know it. We know it. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. No one has even, like, we're not even denying it anymore. Niggas are talking about, let him redeem himself. I don't understand why I don't do this to the white man. You know that this man has literally, like, assaulted, raped, kidnapped, um, like oh, done words. all kinds of like horrible, unfathomable thing, unfathomable stuff to children. Children. And when he was caught, like convicted for it, when he got the guilty verdict, the girl's like, "Oh no, I'm about to step in the name of love, honey." <laughs> Who's canceling Dave Chappelle for anything? What are we talking about? What? Why are you wasting? I'm so. This is boring. Like, <laughs> and it didn't make sense. Again, you're complaining about this while streaming on Netflix. You can't Honey, be serious. <laughs> this nigga walked anyway. I'm not even going to talk about that. It just doesn't make sense, and and niggas eat it up because they feel like it's more progressive than they want to be, and don't realize that they are being fed some absolute bullshit. 
that whole random token trans friend, the one who killed Child, herself. Please. That whole thing where he then turned it around and was like, my friend would have loved my jokes, but she went online and people were dragging her for being associated with me. And then she killed herself. Like it was the fault of Twitter while also saying that Twitter doesn't matter and it's not real life. It's not a real place and you don't care about it. And it matters so little that half your special is about it. But it means nothing because this is real life. And in real life, you have a, a token trans friend who died. And you decide to blame that on the very people you say don't exist or don't count. It doesn't it's make sense. It's just giving move on. I'm tired. But like, that's, I'm it's just, exactly like most of your special. It doesn't make sense. Just b- 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 move on. Like, it's not, I'm, I'm just over this shit. I'm really, I, I'm bored. I'm over it. I feel like you, the nigga I think is smart enough to just craft material that like even if you were to tell jokes on this topic that could be far better and healthier for everybody involved and actually funny but that's not going to happen because your perspective on it and your stance on it is very clear which is why when people are saying oh joke this joke that joke that it's just a waste of time it's like yeah you can write i understand how jokes work bitch i'm not fucking stupid like (laughs) you still have to like they are still brought from a a point of view yes they don't come from nothingness they weren't just born from a void so I just, I, I just, all I'm saying is like, girl, Ooh, as tired as I am of like the same bullshit and the same excuses and the same rhetoric or whatever, and like constantly having people jump over the intersectionality that exists in this space. Like y'all keep lumping us in with like, your favorite super outspoken glad member right. or super white uh, gay activist or trans activist that is like always creating a thread anytime someone says something offensive, which is like their complete right to motherfucking do regardless or whatever. But like, I want to remind you, <laughs> they're still white. Yeah. It doesn't. We're in a completely different fight than them still. Yeah. Yep. Um, but we got to fight y'all too. So right. no one is, ain't no crystal stare over here. It's really not like a laughing matter. And you're not yeah. con- talking to a bunch of people that are just like, Dave Chappelle can eat a dick, always hated him. He should burn, whatever. Like a lot of these people are huge fans and are just mm-hmm. disappointed and exhausted by it. Not just sitting in the wing somewhere waiting to be mad. This nigga's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Yep. There are countless people, specifically black, black trans women, that are, you know, out in the street somewhere, lay down dead. Like, nobody's doing anything about that. Nobody's right. doing anything about that. While y'all are, like, trying to play Olympics with who's, you know, more oppressed or who's more marginalized or whatever. Yes, we can do that all the day long. We could talk about, you know, history here and slavery and all that other stuff. Yeah, we can do that. But it's not, like, what purpose does that serve? Who does that help in the long run? We are Black, too. You 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 act like you have to argue about being black with us. Nigga, we're black. We don't just also have what, this other shit that you don't know nothing about. And why is that so why hard to understand? Confusing. Dave Chappelle literally throughout the special talks like black people and LGBTQ or They're specifically trans people are different, different groups, groups of people. Bitch, we're right here. And I, again, want to remind you them old phase don't care about us <laughs> like they don't it's the, like, like they still the even, white gays do not give a shit about us girl we would be doing way better if the white gays gave a fuck about are us are you fucking kidding, kidding me <laughs> are you shitting me <laughs> my nigga are you kidding no first we would all be housed <laughs> shut I'm, the fuck up <laughs> I'm just it's oh my god every That's problem it. you have for being black we have for being black we're black too but I gotta come home and fight with you too bitch so imagine that random what did molestation joke oh my god it was just all over the place and terrible 
It was all I just again, I didn't really even want to get too deep, like I said, but while we do on here is live. I actually completely forgot about it. So I'm glad you brought it up because I completely forgot about it. It's just I was disgusted. I'm just again, I'm I'm tired of the same shit and y'all refusing to tap into why it doesn't make any fucking sense or Mm -hmm. just I have to believe intentionally overlook the way it mirrors the same shit that y'all be doing or you know I might I just also wanted to remind you that everybody is fine except for you know the people he's making the jokes about you know they're the ones actually struggling they're the ones actually facing the real life consequences of his transphobic jokes that y'all are telling people to get over. I mean, the girls are literally dying. I don't. Dave Chappelle's fine. Dave Chappelle's going to be fine. Dave Chappelle's going to be, he's going to be way more than fine. This isn't anything besides what it was supposed to do, which was get y'all to talk about it and stream it. And um, it just. And here we are. Comes at the uh, cost of, you know, Trans Actual folks, human lives. Their business, trying to live. Um, last but not least, I will say uh, I'm tired of the candy corn drama. Like, chill, calm down. It's not that nasty. And I'm not even like a big, like, like personally. <laughs> no, I'm just over it. Like, the candy, candy cane, corn. the candy cane, candy corn <laughs> hatred is a meme. It's not real. Oh, it's wow. Like, it's not. <laughs> Like, sure, people don't like candy corn because it's not great. It really isn't fantastic. <laughs> um, but the way that y'all act like like every bag of candy corn should be shot with assault rifles. <laughs> it's insane to me. It's not yeah. that bad. Like, I don't understand it. And, and we have to deal with this every year around now because we're getting into Halloween. and It's, it's like, Halloween, yeah. So we're just going to do this corn. every year. Yep. Oh, my God. Candy corn is the worst thing ever. If you eat candy corn, you're going to hell. You worship. There people. are people who can taste different flavors in a candy corn. What? Apparently, the three sections are different flavors. That's what somebody told me. I'm like, it just tastes that. like one little chewy thing of sugar to me. Which yeah. is why I can really keep it. Like, but you know, I think niggas are just I know, you know like I know a lot of people don't like the season. texture. Yeah, I a mean a lot of people say it's you know, it's wax. They're very passable. <laughs> I mean, and on Halloween, like, girl, you, you brought candy corn and you could have brought Snickers or Twix, just Reese's, Skittles, Starburst, Starburst, things that the girls Sour love. Patch, like nerds, they're very the, the pop, popular candies Jolly are popular Rancher, for a reason. Now and later's, <laughs> you know, like I I could understand some disappointment on Halloween, but again, you are spree. Niggas are <laughs> you can just <laughs> cookies and so cream Hershey's, one hundred so grand. <laughs> Like, oh, bitch, a 100 grand now. Come on. Like, why would you give anybody candy corn when there are so many (laughs) other options? You know what I mean? It's like, it's not that candy corn is just unspeakable and how disgusting it is. It's just unreasonable. Like, why would you do that, grandma? Like, what was the... Even my grandma would drop a whole tube of Mentos in a baby's thing before they give before she gave you some fucking candy corn. It's like you didn't want to try. You know, this is for like the nursing home. I love that at first she was like, Y'all doing too much, and then you started dragging candy corns. No, it's not like it's not I'm not dragging the candy. I'm dragging the people that give it away at Halloween. Candy corn is something that like <laughs> There's a difference. No, don't do this. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you're not going to make yourself like a hypocrite. What I'm saying no, is. No, I think it's hilarious because that's exactly what anybody would do. It's like, y'all are doing too much, but also candy corn. It's like, it's hard to defend because it's such a 
Bly as candy and why would you even do this to other people especially well, children something else. like there are so <laughs> many nicer things right you children know children can't and just you go give... buy their own candy usually like why? this is you a don't special day for treats <laughs> candy corn is like one of those things when you're like in elementary school and you're having a Halloween slash pizza party or something yes. and you just put candy corn like in a bowl among <laughs> like a whole other thing and then you have at it or you don't like candy corn isn't something that's like your option is candy corn. Good night. <laughs> That's not fair. That's not fair. And it's not because it's just so nasty. It's because they're way better things. <laughs> but y'all be like, oh, my goodness. You actually taste candy corn and don't immediately spit it out and vomit. You must be a demon. <laughs> like, I'm tired of that shit, bitch. It's not that bad. Like, let people enjoy it if they want it, motherfucker. Like, it's not the worst. Oh. And meanwhile, y'all be eating red Twizzlers and shit like that. Mm. Them shits don't taste like Goodyear tires. <laughs> Nothing's worse than a, than a fucking licorice, especially black. Ugh. All I mean, of yes, the mainstream the, I feel like, licorices are nasty. There's like I, some specialty ones that are good. But them hoes, no. Leave it I've alone. never had a licorice that I have ever liked. In my days, they <laughs> are trash. So y'all are not going to be reading candy corn in its simplicity down every motherfucking year. But we're letting Twizzlers <laughs> and fucking Peeps go. Like, I don't, y'all don't oh. hear. Well, actually, they drag Peeps during Easter. Okay, That's I was going to say. Well, I mean, peeps. and Peeps and candy corn are like the same flavor and different textures. Now, peeps are fucking disgusting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what else are supposed to be good but are nasty? Twinkies. How did yeah, Twinkies, Twinkies ever get popular? Really gross. You eat one of those and you're like, what the fuck is the point of this? Yeah. <laughs> the, there are oh. just some things that you eat and you stop after second grade. And there's no <laughs> excuse to keep yeah. going. Yeah. And I think Twinkies are there. Um, mm -hmm. definitely peeps but like candy corn if you're a grown up and you like throwing some candy corn in, you know down your gullet fine yeah I, it's not my go to but right. if like your niece or your baby or somebody was like you want some candy corn I take it and eat it so they feel you know seen <laughs> but y'all be making like y'all would like I feel like y'all would literally spit on these children like <laughs> like for offering, okay, for having I didn't the realize. nerve to offer you candy corn. <laughs> I it's did not know niggas bad. was being that intense about it. It is all, like P O D overdrive, okay. overdrive, overdose, overdoing it. Gotcha. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. I understand why it's not your favorite. I understand why people don't like it. I understand why people think it's gross. But calling upon like Cerberus and all of the like guardians Please. of Hades to come and assist you in a fight against candy corn okay. is a lot. And I'm over it. <laughs> Niggas letting out big feelings. Like, I'm so okay. tired of this motherfucker. I don't know how I have not seen, like I've seen maybe a couple of candy corn memes, but nothing crazy. So... I think I even tweeted a couple of years ago, like, candy corn's really not that bad. It's like a meme. And people were in my mentions like, oh, no. Mm -mm. Well, I thought you had taste, but then, <laughs> like, I didn't even say I ate it. I just said it's not that bad. I mean, it's nasty to me, but I understand. It's nasty to a lot of people, and I understand that, but not to the point where it's like I'm foaming at the mouth because how not dare you? Not nastier than black licorice. <laughs> Nothing. Ugh. Why was that no. made? That is for and like... And honestly, not nastier than Chico sticks. I do not like Chico sticks. And I know y'all finna come for me. I don't care. Chico sticks are not good. Who did that? I don't know. What I is don't it? Know. What? I, I don't, don't even know what... I don't even know how to describe it to a person who's never eaten it. That's what <laughs> a crazy ass experience a Chico stick is. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> I haven't had a Chico stick in a long ass time. Me either. It's probably been since middle school. I prefer the Butterfinger. Yeah, and even those, I'm real cool on. Like, wow. Well, you know what? There isn't any food in that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because really what like is that him. thing? It's just... <laughs> It's a chocolate covered Chico stick. <laughs> it's a crispy, crunchy, peanut buttery butterfinger. <laughs> anyway. It's really, 
chocolate covered <sighs> mystery. I don't know what that is. Yeah. It just tastes good. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't taste like a Chico stick, but it's it's a similar kind of like feeling. Or... I don't know what that is. It's just chocolate covered sweet thing. And I, it's I not reminiscent it. of any. I mean, it's we're describing it like nobody else has ever had one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. I, but I think what we're really trying to do is figure it out. We're trying to like <laughs> we're trying to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. I don't know what that substance is called. I love be- I butterfingers. Like I I will never fix my mouth to say butterfingers are nasty because I love they're like my fave. I mean, actually, they're my fave anymore. If- they were my fave when I was a kid, but I still love them. It says crispy peanut butter core. It don't taste like peanut butter to me. Core? It says... Core? The bar consists of a layered crispy peanut butter core covered in chocolate. What the fucking sci-fi is? Like, are you kidding <laughs> That's me? That's not peanut butter, child. I don't know. A peanut butter core. That is I not I don't know what else they putting in that, but that is not peanut butter. <laughs> that is not enough information. Oh, yeah. No, that's... I don't know what that the is. The essence of. Man, so, I don't even, it doesn't even <laughs> taste know. like peanut butter. Right. So I don't, I reject that. But that's Peanut buttery? Maybe it might remind you of peanut butter, of, of a time you had a peanut butter. No, I can't But say it that doesn't. It, I can't say that it's ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still like them, but Chico sticks can get in the bin. I don't ever want another one. I don't no. think so. <laughs> Or them little cinnamon candies. Those are useless. The one that are just Putting red? Like tea, yes. They're just red. And they don't do anything but cinnamon disc. Girl, just give me a real peppermint. Honestly, like, there are just some candies that should be left out of the holidays and should just mm-hmm. be left for people who, <laughs> who love them. Whatever this is a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but if if you, like... If you like that nasty ass bullshit, then you should just keep it to yourself and never offer it to anybody, <laughs> Halloween or otherwise. Because who the fuck? I mean, now let me tell you something. The ones that come, the classic girl that comes in the little wrapper that looks like a strawberry. Mm. Oh no, you know no, what I'm talking about. Oh, now yes. that one's a classic. It never That's misses. That's a top tier uh, Mima candy that'll never, yes, miss. ever, ever be wrong. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she's a one. You can cheat, keep that. It's just in. something about that strawberry goo in the middle of that candy. <laughs> and it's kind of like kind of chewy. Woo, nigga. Yes. What is that other ass, that old ass caramel? Oh, that, not a uh, word is original. Bitch, keep Listen. Werther's away from me. <laughs> I don't like, I, I think it's supposed to be just like caramel by itself. What's caramel? And I just don't. Don't okay. So anyway, but all the candies sell, obviously. So do whatever you want to. But I mean, yeah, pe- being extra. people buy them, I guess. But like, <laughs> I'm not having that pronunciation argument with you again because you say it like a correctly. commercial, and I yeah. say it like real niggas in real life. Oh, okay. so. Also, that reminds me of the caramel apple lollipop. You know, the <laughs> green one with. The- <laughs> With the yes, caramel, I know on that. N- I yeah. know that nigga favorite. Yes, I do. Also, <laughs> niggas used to sell those in high school. <laughs> Definitely sold them in high With school. With laffy taffies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> classic. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. all. I really just all felt right. like y'all need to calm down <laughs> when it comes to candy corn, but also, you know, I get it if you don't like it. <laughs> right. But y'all also eat some questionable shit when it comes to candy, and I would know because I hate everything. Yeah, y'all eat a lot of things that I think are disgusting, like s'mores. But we don't have to go down that road because I know how you feel. So that wraps up this week's episode of The Read. Doesn't make any sense. (laughs) Don't forget to check out At Liberty, the weekly podcast from the ACLU as they explore the biggest civil rights and civil liberties issues of the day. Recent episodes include conversations with Kimberly Crenshaw on the true meaning of critical race theory. (laughs) like we were just talking about earlier and Nicole Hannah Jones on how slavery still manifests in every aspect of American life. So subscribe to at Liberty on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. Um, let's see anything else from you before we leave. Um, I feel like I had something I wanted to say, but I don't remember what it 
was <laughs> I do know that it wasn't crucial anyway. It was just something that was meant to be like nice. Oh. So it wasn't yeah, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then so we will see. Inspirational or some shit, and now I don't remember. So just, I guess fuck everybody, you know. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we will see y'all next week. <laughs>